Sure. Thank you very much. And thanks for everybody being on. And uh, let me just say this. We're thrilled to have NC State. We think we've got a great matchup uh, with NC State, Maryland. You got the old ACC ties. You've got uh, records being 33, 33 and four over the years. Um, NC State coming off a great win to close the regular season. Um, and if you look at the close uh, the close losses from both teams, both NC State and um, uh, Maryland, uh, stellar seasons by by both uh, both programs, and we couldn't be more excited to have uh, North Carolina State in into the uh, bowl. Uh, been friends with Coach Dorn for a long time. Have uh, really admired his work and the work that he's done with the po program. And uh, Boo Corgan's uh, a great friend as well as um, a number of people on the NC State staff. So we're looking forward to um, working with everybody. I think it's a fun place. The great thing about Charlotte is its walkability. People come, park their car, uh, enjoy Charlotte, and we have a lot of fun with the bowl. Well, thanks, Danny, and uh, excited to see you in person and thankful for the opportunity uh, to come to the bowl and, and obviously for our team to be in state and have that, you know, uh, 12 months ago, we were in San Diego and could hardly get any of our players, parents out there. So it's great to be home and look forward to playing, you know, in a professional stadium there. Um, and obviously playing against coach Loxley and, and Maryland, we know they're a well-coached football team that has a lot of talent and, uh, was so actually watching them play Ohio State this morning, watching a little of their film. They've got some really good, talented players and some good schemes. Um, so we're looking forward to it. And um, it's been a lot happened, I guess, here since we last played a game. And so excited, I guess, to answer questions to the media about where we're at. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty important stretch uh, from a recruiting standpoint for me and our program. Um, you know, Coach Beck is now the head coach at Coastal Carolina and, and really excited for Tim and his family and uh, definitely has done great things for us and our program. And, you know, John Garrison has also left our staff to, to take on another opportunity elsewhere and, and uh, thank John and his family for their time here. It was a great time with John and, and Tim both. Um, but sometimes, you know, things happen like that in this profession and We've been able to now officially um, bring in Robert and I as our offensive coordinator um, and Garrett Tujay as our offensive line coach. And those two have worked together at BYU and at University of Virginia for 14 years combined and uh, have great relationships with each other, know each other inside and out. And um, looking forward to the change, you know, in our systems. It's going to evolve as it has over time. And Robert has been, uh, he's really unique. You know, he's, came through the BYU Lavelle Edwards tree of coaching and then evolved with Mike Leach. Um, I probably need to stop right there and, and say that my prayers are with Mike and his family right now as, as he's battling. Sounds like uh, he's definitely fighting. And Mike's a mentor to a lot of coaches, many that I have on my staff that have worked with him. So I definitely like to say that about coach. Um, but after, you know, Robert's time with him at Texas Tech and he's moved on with Rich Rodriguez at Arizona and then, you know, him and Bronco reunited at BYU and then to Virginia. And so his offense has got a lot of stamps on it and it's very unique. And I think the best thing about Robert having to compete against him now at Virginia and Syracuse is he knows how to fit what he knows around the players that he has and utilize the strengths of his team. And so there's going to be a lot of learning here with our group after the bowl game. We won't change offenses prior to um, just because that would be unfair for those guys. Uh, Robert and Garrett are here just trying to learn the names of our players now. <laughs> and so I think that's enough in helping us close out this recruiting class. You know, Garrett uh, been a head coach at the junior college level, was a great player on the offensive line at BYU and has, you know, territorial knowledge of this conference with UVA. <laughs> and uh, has recruited some of the players that are on our team. And so excited about that. And I think it's really important from a coordinator standpoint to have the line coach that you want. And that's just kind of timed up. Um, so unique situation for us. Timing is everything, I guess people say. 
Uh, as far as our team goes, you know, we're back at it. We started our bowl prep this past weekend with our developmental work. <clears throat> and uh, it's been fun getting on the grass again with the younger players. And we're in final exams. So, you know, kind of balancing that with prep and our coaches recruiting all at the same time. And so there's a lot of that happening at once. And as you know, the signing date for the first go around is this coming Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday. So we'll see where we fit into that box and, and then how much work we have left leading up to the second signing date. So happy holidays, I guess, are in order for everybody on the call and our fan base and look forward to having a little time, you know, with my family as we get out of this active recruiting period into the dead period next week. I'll open it up for any questions. Um, remember to raise your hand. Does anybody have questions for Danny? Um, talk about the bowl or ticket sales or anything like that. Uh, Brett. Dave, um, first of all, who's going to be calling the plays in the bowl? And then the second question is, um, given Robert's success over the last couple of years with Brennan Armstrong and then Garrett Schrader, how important is it to have a guy like that with a young quarterback like MJ to, to bring him along? Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at the success that uh, Brennan had under coach and then after coach left, you know, and then the lack of success Garrett had and then coach came in. You know, I think those are two live examples in our league of the impact that he had on those two young men. And so our quarterbacks are very fortunate to have a guy like Robert here. Look forward to that. And I look forward not just to them, but the guys we're bringing in, you know, and recruiting. Um, I can't talk about them yet, but once we sign them, I'll be able to, you know. <clears throat> as far as the bowl game goes, it'll be a collective effort. You know, Kurt Roper and Joker Phillips, as you know, have both been coordinators. Um, and so those guys, along with Todd Goble, those are our three full-time coaches that'll be coaching in the bowl game. They'll work hand-in-hand -hand together. And uh, Kurt will take the lion's share of the play-calling responsibilities but it's going to be a group effort I can say that um, with the offensive line you know Austin um, our offensive graduate assistant will be coaching them and you know played center at Duke he's been a GA here he's really really good young coach uh, so I look forward to having him really kind of go through that experience the guys are really excited for him and I know that they'll do a good job Grant Gibson was out there helping coach the other day with him and you know, that's part of what happens, and these players will be asked to step up a little bit. You know, they're they're experienced guys on that offensive line, and so you know, I guess it's different not to have the guys that were here with them through the year, but that's kind of what some of these bowls have become. You're seeing it across the board, and we'll rally. These guys will do a great job coaching them, and the players will do a great job playing for them. Thanks, Dave, and Merry Christmas yep. to you and your family. Yeah, you too. Ship. Yeah, Coach, I don't know how many people are in the uh, transfer portal now. I guess there were more than a 1,000 about a week ago. I mean, for a coach, is is this chaotic, as chaotic as it seems? And is there any way to bring any, I don't know what the right word is, sanity to the whole process and yeah. make things a little less chaotic? Well, I hope so, Chip. You know, I think this is a new era. Um, there's a lot of change right now, and there's very little enforcement. There's very little uh, guidelines. I think there's a lot of tampering. I think there's uh, a lot of third party bad advice being given. Um, I think there's a kind of a robbing of young people's ability, not just in football, but to battle, you know, and compete and, and uh, have adversity and learn how to deal with it. I think some people are being robbed of that in their lives. And that's, that's a shame. You know, um, I do think there is a time for people to transfer. I think sometimes guys are buried in depth charts and they're running out of time. And, and I get that like that to me, it makes complete sense, you know, but for guys that are playing and, and guys that are a part of something and, and they have brotherhood and coaches that believe in them and they're getting enticed or poached, you know, I think that that's a real shame in our profession. I do. Um, so, you know, I think all of our coachings, all of the coaches in the country share this belief, you know, that uh, we'd like to see some changes happen. And, and I'm not sure what they are. I'm not responsible for that kind of <laughs> thing. But I, I can tell you it's 
it's not in a good place right now for the young men, for the coaches, for the families, all of it. And, you know, there's a place for this. It just needs to be roped in, you know, it needs to be regulated. It needs to be enforced and it needs to be something that is well thought through. Aaron. <clears throat> hey, Dave. Um, curious with NIL, when you're talking about recruiting, this is the second December of going through that process of recruiting with NIL being a live, I guess, factor or influence. Do you hear more from recruits now about that uh, or even with guys in the transfer portal than when you were going through this the first time around? Yeah, I think last year, no one really knew what it was going to be like, you know, and now it's kind of commonplace communication as far as questions. And so it's a lot different in 12 months. Things have changed a lot. Rob. Uh, yeah, my question actually is for Danny Morrison. I was just wondering, could you speak to the timetable in terms of when you guys kind of pinpointed NC State as being the team you wanted to come to Charlotte and the attributes that excite you the most, I guess, about the Wolfpack? Well, we 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 had them pinpointed very early in the process. And, you know, our worry was that they may not be there when it came our turn as far as the pecking order was concerned. Um, there was some um, – the domino effect, if the Rose Bowl would have gone in different directions and so forth, it had uh, impact on about 17 different bowls. But we had NC State pinpointed uh, very early – uh, great fan base, uh, great program. And um, so we were excited about NC State. And then on the Big Ten side, um, we had several that we were following, but uh, Maryland really made sense with the kind of year that they had driving distance, uh, two close games against uh, Michigan and Ohio State, who were both uh, obviously in the uh, CFP playoffs. So, uh, we, we, we couldn't be more pleased with the matchup that we have. And you mentioned uh, Maryland, sir. I just to follow up on that, what kind of attributes do the Terps have in terms of do you think this can be a really exciting game for the fans? Well, they, they certainly have a high powered offense. Uh, and again, they played uh, uh, well in, in, in big games. And uh, we just think the two teams, uh, it'll be a great game between, between two really good programs. Matt Carter. Yeah, there's questions for Danny as well. Danny, does this feel like a little bit getting back to normal in the post-COVID world with this bowl calendar? And secondly, have you uh, worked out the Mayo bath with both coaches yet, or is that still to be determined? Well, first of all, it is nice to get back. Uh, last year, you know, of course, two years ago, we had Wisconsin and um, Wake Forest. That was at a time when we couldn't have fans. So that was a weird kind of experience. It was a great experience for the players and the teams. But uh, not having fans there, of course, made it uh, uh, just made it more difficult. So last year, we had North Carolina, South Carolina. We had a really good uh, – it was really a good game for South Carolina. And I would think that uh, – in a lot of ways, it was a springboard to the really good year that they had um, in uh, 2022. So regarding the Mayo Bath, we have have a lot of different uh, options for the various teams. So, uh, you know, we're not putting uh, pressure on anybody, and uh, we've got a lot of different uh, options. James? I think we have I think the reporter that asked that question should have to have the mayo dumped on his head. Regardless of who wins or does it have to be? Yeah, a just, just period for okay. asking that question like that, Matt. Okay. <laughs> I think um, we would yeah. all second that. James, go ahead. Yeah, this is this is for Dave. Dave, um, just in general, obviously the transfer portal windows kind of change things in terms of guys announcing do you have a strategy for players who've gone in in terms of being available for the bowl game uh players that are in the portal are not available for the bowl game for your team okay all right thanks gibby 
Yeah, Dave, how important are these extra practices that you get for bowls for, for the young guys? And is there a couple of guys that you could name that, uh, that might be standing out and have done really well uh, that, that you're counting on possibly for next year? Yeah, they're critical. I mean, I had two practices. So, you know, we've put the whole team through like eight or nine periods just to make sure we're keeping our timing and our fundamentals and all those kind of things. And then everyone goes through special teams. And then uh, the guys that have taken the lion's share of the reps are conditioning after that. And then the rest of the team's doing what they do. You know, Josh Crabtree, uh, it's been fun seeing him. And Jalen Coit, um, Anthony Smith, uh, Julian Gray, well, Michael Allen, all these young players um, getting reps, you know, uh, seeing Lyndon Cooper getting reps on the O-line, Jaleel Davis, I'm going to leave people out, but uh, Ryland Van, like all these guys, you know, and on defense, the defensive linemen, Brandon Cleveland and Nick Campbell, you know, Claude Larkin, Zion Reeves, all the linebackers that are behind these guys are getting valuable reps right now, you know, so to get to see Jordan Poole and Caden Fordham, you know, it's fun to watch. And, and, uh, and I definitely have enjoyed it and we'll do the same thing this coming weekend. But it's too early, you know. I mean, like, <clears throat> as you know, we're going to have however many of these practices we end up doing. And then we'll have our spring ball, which comes out of the winter program. And it's a long ways until September. And so there's going to be a ton of growth. I mean, a ton out of this group of guys. Um, and I'm excited about it. You know, there's, there's a good group. We're losing a lot of good players. But there's a good group, good young group of guys that – because of the COVID rule where you have 60 year players all over your roster, they've been patiently waiting their turn. Jalen Scott's a great example. Yeah, it's been waiting his turn behind these really good linebackers, you know. So it's gonna be fun, you know, to see them emerge and and step into leadership roles. I told Tim McKay this yesterday, like, you know, we're losing Grant Gibson, Bryson Spees, and Chandler Zavala on the O line. And this is your time, you know, it's your time, him and Dylan McMahon. You know, Bryce, and, and uh, to see what they can do as leaders, you know, to, to see Derek Eason emerge as a leader, Andy Belt, like, you know, so there are some guys that have huge, huge opportunities, you know, to step into a new light and, and really relish a role that they've been not taking the back seat to, but have been a part of the ride watching those guys. And, and so... As much as I'm excited about the development of the player, I'm just as excited about the development of the person through the leadership opportunities these guys have now. Rob? Uh, yeah, this might be a better question for Danny, but I know over the years the bowl games would provide opportunities for uh, the kids to go to hospitals and do fun things, do trips and such. Are there anything that, uh, that the uh, Duke's Mayo Bowl is going to provide for the uh, student athletes? Uh, in the build-up to the game? We do, and we, we've we uh, had really rave reviews for a long time with the bowl game about the activities for the players. Uh, there's a driving experience at Charlotte Motor Speedway, which is a lot of fun. Uh, Will Webb, who was the previous executive director, did a marvelous job of pulling these together. So the driving experience is uh, fun for the teams. There's also a shopping spree experience at uh, Belk at South Park. And then uh, we have a, a, a community outreach with the Second Harvest Food Bank. So we work, uh, we try not to have too many events. We want them not to be over-programmed. I think the coaches appreciate that as well, but we want our events to be high quality. And I think uh, the teams will find that to be true. Thank you, sir. Chip. Yeah, first I was going to say, I think the mayo or mat would be a good idea for, for coach. I think that's a good idea. Um, a couple of quick things for you. Do you know, has anybody opted out of the bowl yet from your team? Do you know how many people maybe won't play in that game? And a second question would be with Chris Dunn, Christopher Dunn winning the, the grows of just your thoughts on that. That's a pretty big honor, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Um, Devin Carter is the only player. Um, that was playing that won't play in the bowl game. He's, he's decided to declare for the NFL and, and do that. So, you know, we're wishing him well, uh, Chris Dunn. I mean, what a story. So proud of him. 
you know, incredibly proud of him and happy for him and excited for him. You name it. Just uh, been through a lot, you know, through his time off the field, on the field. And it's just really worked himself into being the best version of himself. And, and it's great to see him get the notoriety for that, not just from the Groza, but from the All-American, because we know there's other great kickers out there. And it's great that Chris is getting the, the recognition that he's earned. Corey? Dave, you mentioned, obviously, bringing in Robert and I and now Garrett Touche as well. How big was it for not only to be able to bring the two of them in, but also to do it so quickly to to help, you know, as you said, you're not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to coach up players right now uh, going into the bowl game, but you get them for recruiting purposes, especially this month where you need to be able to convince players to stay in the class and you also need to convince transfers to try to come in too. Well, yeah, I think everything has changed the timeline of, uh, obviously you've seen athletic directors dismissing coaches early in the seasons, middle of the seasons now. And, and with the early signing date, with the transfer portal window, people want to know who are going to, who's going to coach them, you know, um, they do. And rightly so, you know, if I was a parent and I had a son that was being recruited and I didn't know who was position coach or coordinator were going to be or head coach was going to be, that would be a tougher decision. Not that you can't make that decision. You can, but it does help to have those ingredients present in the conversation. And so we were fortunate, you know, to have the opportunity. Um, I appreciate our administration helping me, you know, and, the, and Boo Corgan um, was instrumental in this, you know, with the timing of it all. So, you know, we're, we're a good program here, a great program. We've got a lot to offer. We've got a locker room full of incredible guys to coach. And there's a lot of people that called and texted that wanted these jobs. And, and so I feel like I had a great situation, you know. I mean, to hire coaches into a locker room that has these kind of guys returning uh, with this kind of promise. And, look, people know how hard we play. They know how tough we are. And I think that sells itself. You know, if I'm a coach somewhere and I can go live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and work for a head coach that's been at the school for over 10 years now and, and be in a locker room full of proven players with a culture like this, it's not as hard as you think to go get a great person to want to be here, you know? And, and so I'm, I'm fortunate to have that, to be able to talk with people about. And in Robert's case, you know, his son's the O-line coach at Campbell. He's got grandchildren that are very close and they live in Fuquay Verena, you know? So it wasn't just the job, it was also the family. And that's pretty cool, you know, when you have a, a person on your staff whose, whose family is that local, it makes it even easier. So. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have been in a better situation to replace two great coaches with two great coaches, you know, and two that fit our staff to have, you know, relationships on our staff. You know, Coach Coach Ruffin McNeil has worked with these guys, and so that helps me from a character standpoint to be able to speak to him on them. You know, Brian Mitchell was college teammates with Garrett 2J. You know, my corners coach and him were college teammates. And so to have that, you know, where those guys can talk and, and – Coach Gibson uh, worked at Arizona uh, on Rich Rogers, uh, Rich Rodriguez's staff with uh, Coach and I. So our family, you know, it's it's interesting how it's all tied back together that way. So you know, I feel very fortunate about the chemistry. It's really been awesome to bring these guys in and just see the friendships like that. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> Todd. Yeah, Dave, can you address the challenges that, that Maryland presents for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a ton of information for you yet. I've, I, like I said, I've just watched one game so far, um, and it was a game that was down to the wire uh, against Ohio State. So, you know, they're they're talented. He's recruited well. You know, Mike's done a really good job developing his program that way. And they've got length and they've got speed. Uh, you've got a quarterback. And, and so when you have that, you've got a chance to be dangerous. Uh, they're big on the offensive line. You can see the skill at receiver and DB. Um, I'm not sure who all is playing or not playing for them. I've heard rumors, and um, I'm sure he won't tell us. But, uh, you know, we'll find out when we get down there. But they've got a good football team. They do. And, and so this is going to be a challenge and an opportunity both. And, and we have a good football team. we got a tough group of guys that want to finish well. So we look forward to the matchup.
JC? After, you know, knowing the Devin Leary and his family for so long, was it pretty much straightforward or, or very businesslike on how things parted or did you try to recruit him back? No, I wish Devin well. You know, he's he's been um, a great young man to coach. I have nothing but respect and positive things to say about Devin and his family. And, you know, he made a decision. And let's leave it at that. Brett? Is MJ healthy enough to play in the bowl or will it be Ben? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. So they're both practicing right now. Excited to have them on the field. They went through practice yesterday and the day before. and. You know, I look forward to helping these guys get better. You know, as far as giving you competitive advantages for our opponent, I'm not going to do that. Chip? Yeah, Dave, I was, I was just wondering, on the last play of your last game, Noah Burnett was getting ready to kick a field goal for Carolina, try to kick one, and the cameras were focused on you. You had your head down. looks like you didn't watch it. Um, just what's going through your mind while that play was unfolding? I was praying. That's what I was doing, you know, so 100% talking to God during that one. Do we have anything else for Coach or Danny? No hands. Danny, Hi, we really appreciate you coming. Thanks for your time, Coach. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all.